Only seven weeks and three days to go before we step out of 2019. I don't know about you, but I'm looking forward to all possibilities that lie ahead in 2020. Maybe I'll start a small farm or explore the island a little more. If these sound like things you'd like to try, you'll enjoy today's show. There's advice for farmers. For budding explorers, there's a tour of sections of the Breadbasket Parish. And there's much more. But you have to stay tuned to get a full view of the offering in today's Jamaica Magazine. I'm Adrian Atkinson. Keep watching. Did you know that there are medical, academic, and social benefits of doing a sport? Exercising regularly can reduce the risk of non-communicable diseases such as cancer and stroke. Working together promotes important life skills such as teamwork, leadership, problem solving, and mutual respect. And competing nurtures sportsmanship and lasting friendships, as well as improves self-esteem and resilience. So join us for it today and enjoy these benefits. Hi there, I'm Simone Wolf with your JIS News of the Week. A joint police and military task force will be deployed over the next eight weeks, carrying out intensified safety and security measures leading into the Christmas season. These additional measures are part of our overall crime management strategy and will see a significant ramping up of police presence, particularly in the commercial districts and public spaces. This will be accompanied by other strategic, targeted and intelligence-driven security operations to bolster public safety, maintain public order, deter acquisitive and violent crimes, and further disrupt the gangs that are the source of much of the crimes. The House of Representatives has approved a Joint Select Committee of Parliament report to institute stronger penalties for sexual offences. I believe that these amendments will prove to be effective in deterring acts of violence against the most vulnerable who have for too long been considered easy targets by those who would wish to prey on them. Residents of St. Andrew now have access to a new justice center which was built at a cost of $20 million and opened recently. We look forward to make you happy by the results that we hope to this show not only in the provision of better legal services, not only to ensure that justice is dispensed in a timely manner and that all the people of Jamaica can access justice, but by the facilities that we're putting forward to make sure that the people of this country can not only access, but can have justice provided in attractive surroundings. The Ministry of Finance has signed a Memorandum of Understanding with the United States Agency for International Development, USAID, to receive $5 million U.S. million in grant funding to help the country respond effectively in the event of a natural disaster. And of course, the grant will support Jamaica as we seek to improve the governance of the funds that will be placed in our, nat in our natural disaster fund. Prime Minister Andrew Holness, who is in China to participate in the country's international import exposition, has told the Asian country and others that Jamaica is open to partner with other nations to create and assimilate new technology and innovations. We are excited to explore with your country the possibilities of pairing Jamaican minds and aspirations with Chinese experience and know-how in areas such as renewable energy, water security, agriculture, healthcare, and STEM education. Cabinet has approved contracts totaling $1.7 billion for the provision of security and related services at health facilities across the Southeast Regional Health Authority. A $29 million contract was signed Wednesday and groundbroken for the construction of the Ken Barr Health Center at Point Hill in St. Catherine. It's not just about the preventative services, giving advice about lifestyle and so on. It's adding some curative services through the doctors who will do their diagnosis and nurses. It also will involve 
access to prescription drugs. The other thing that is going to be added to this facility periodically is an oral care service. And finally, each local authority division across the country will be getting 25 2,000 gallon water tanks from the local government ministry to distribute to residents affected by water shortage. Very shortly, myself and the minister with our portfolio in the office uh, in the Ministry of Economic Growth and Job Creation will be making a special announcement as to a collective response to the question of water across the country. We're going to be working closely with the National Water Commission through the Ministry of Economic Growth. And those are some of the stories making news this week. I'm Simone Wolf. More life. More memories. More moments. Jamaica Moves is a call to action to prevent non communicable diseases. Get active, eat healthy. You can protect yourself from high blood pressure, obesity asthma, certain cancer diseases, and more. The government is always encouraging Jamaicans to staycation. You know, stay on the island, explore the beauties in our backyard, support local businesses, and build our economy while having fun. Sound good, not true? Well, if you can ride a bicycle and are up for a good workout while sightseeing, I know the perfect place to visit. Watch this. When you think of Treasure Beach in St. Elizabeth, you're thinking of swimming, eating fresh fruits and vegetables from neighboring farms, or even the catch of the day. But the area has more to offer, like Red's Cycle Tour. The name of my business is Red Cycle Tours, and um, yeah, we offer different rides. That all depends on your fitness level, right? Because what we're doing is, is promoting sports tourism, you know, in that sense. Keep it local, and at the same time, fitness and wealth. So the, the tours, we have, like the farm tour, a local farm tour here, it's about two to two and a half hours round trip. As we are about to go on a cycling tour, um, a real adventure that explores Treasure Beach and our environment here. We're going to go to the farms this morning and you're going to meet the farmers and then you're going to learn a little about, about what makes Treasure Beach. So welcome, um, safety tips, we stay on the left two bicycle length apart, right? Um, if and when you do have to hit potholes, right, you hold on your brakes before, slow down, and then flow through. All right, the bikes are, are pretty good. They're all suspension, and um, yeah, we should be good. Well, my helmet, I'm all right, I'm all right. Yeah, all right, man. Don't take me too much that you can't talk, you know. Oh. <laughs> Christ. <laughs> uh -huh. That looked choking, man. health-wise, how does cycling help with that? Cycling is a complete exercise, um, like swimming. Mm -hmm. Yeah, your entire body, all the muscles in your body, um, yeah, actually work. Because um, you have to be pushing and pulling at the same time. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a complete exercise. Um, and plus concentration. When you're on the road, you know, with cars and stuff like that, your concentration, you know. Has to be on point. Yes, have to be on point. So you're, you know, um, as I said, a full body workout and then your mind has to be sharp at the same time. So, um, it's a healthy way. I know because especially coming up the little slope, mm -hmm. I feel it you in feel my it in your thighs. Oh goodness. That's right. But what made you start the bike tours? Started out as a chef, a baker and a chef um, some years ago and then started to meet, it, meet people. Mm -hmm. And that's where the idea came about. They wanted to explore. Um, I started out by just hiking, like walking tours, mm -hmm. and then the idea came. 
about using bicycles and add to that with the GX Triathlon that had helped me to propel the whole idea and put it together that you know um, yeah people need need bikes when they're here and and they, they need to explore our area and you know meet our people and yeah and learn our culture and so what exactly St. Elizabeth has to offer? Uh, what St. Elizabeth has to offer because as you know down here is the food basket is that a hill? It is a hill. It's, the, it's your first one. <laughs> My first hill? I don't think I'm moving. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, I'm going to rest. That was a hill and a half. First hill, the rough. This bike tour is no joke. No joke. I feel it in the thighs. I didn't even know I was moving because my legs were dead. Like, dead, dead. One day somebody won't like push me. <laughs> this is off the beaten track now and this is where it's fun because then you get to see all the farmlands, all the cantaloupes and the watermelons and the escalion and you name it. Everything that is farmed here in South St. Elizabeth. We are now at Liquor Park, Cheddar Beach. Here is a farming area. Here you have the tomatoes and, and cantaloupe also, but these, these um, cantaloupe are a bit younger. So now we are, we are mulching, are mulching the land to, to get a good produce, a oh. good production. So hmm. if, if you don't mulch it, then the result will be poor. And the chemical wise, you have to spray for the insecticide and, and etc. Fungicide also. These are some unique melons that they have here. They call it the tangerine, or some people say the pineapple, or the orange. This is the orange one, in my understanding. It is not common to every farmer. It's a bit unique. So the higglers and the and and the um, they call them the the, the the marketing personnel. They yield for this type of fruits because they sell fast. bike tour is almost like pedestrian then. They go into the little nooks and crannies and lanes where people live. They see how they live, they see how their houses are made. And um, they are intrigued by this, you know. Um, some, for example, Europe, some Europeans or Americans are where they come from. I've never seen people cooking on wood fire, for example. And when they go into these little lanes and so on, these people have their kitchens made from native material, whatever. Sometimes there is no building at all. They just, it's just a pile of stone on which they make a fire and they cook and wash and so on. So that is interesting to them. It go into the far reaches of their mind and let them inquire further. How these people came about? How did they live like this? How did they learn all these skills? The journey was amazing, especially the downhill sections. Cycling offers you a good leg workout, so if you are up for the challenge, this is definitely the activity for you. Thank you very much, Damien. Wait, we're not finished with tours just yet. In our next feature, watch how visually impaired students explore artifacts at the National Museum of Jamaica using the sense of touch. When I was a tour guide here at the Institute of Jamaica, you have you know, visitors just coming into our museum space, whether it's a teacher, a parent, you know, even tertiary students, they would come in and they would say, you know, what kind of programs do you have for um, someone who is blind? Because I have a sister or a brother who is blind and I didn't have an answer for them. As time went on, I started thinking about, you know, there must be something that I can do to create a program that would impact that kind of disability. So I said, well, if they can't see, they can definitely learn in a tactile way. Stephanie's idea flourished. In 2016, she launched Touch Tours at the National Museum Jamaica in collaboration with my school, the Salvation Army School for the Blind. Come, let me show you what Touch Tours are all about. I have my most favorite piece throughout all my ex my um, exploration. I have very good pewter pewter flagon. Very good. Very it's good. smooth. It's like a um, thermos. 
and it has an opener. Very good. And it um inside it they put wine and other stuff. Very good. So just in case you are wondering, these guided touch tours are free of cost. The tours aim to engage students like me who are blind, visually impaired, or have developmental or cognitive disabilities. Here's more. We do it in small numbers, no more than six to 10 students at a time. And so what we do, we set up an area, we set up a table and we have, we select an artifact that is related to a particular theme. So let's say uh, we want them to learn about the Taino people or the Africans or the Chinese. We would select those artifacts. We allow them to come in, into that area that is set up for the touch tours. Go Sarah. It has a little small texture mm -hmm. and it has, it's bumpy, it doesn't, have like, like where this spoon and it is straight and flat. Right. Bumpy. It's bumpy. And it's kind of straight, but it has a little curve. Yes. And you have a little hole inside. And do you remember where that piece came from? We talked about it. Do you remember? From which animal it came from? The elephant. The elephant. The tusk. And it's called what? Ivory. Ivory. Very good. And so. We engage them, we talk to them, we allow them to engage with the artifact. They, you know, stretch their hands out and we ask them, you know, to feel what is in front of them. And we ask them questions like, what do you think this is? We want them to engage um, with the artifact in exploring different shapes, different textures, how it feels, different weights and so on to ignite their metaphorical thinking. And that is what Touch Tours is really all about. What are you holding, Deidre? A baby doll. Very good. Tell us the story behind that. Do you remember what I said? When they have a twin and one of them died, they made this to represent it. Very good. As you can see, just like any other guided tours for students, we get to learn about the wide range of artifacts at the museum through touch. The National Museum is the repository of um, Jamaica's cultural heritage. So we house over 17,000 artifacts um, representing our tangible cultural heritage. Some of the permanent exhibitions we have at the National Museum Jamaica, we have Ubuntu, Taino, and uh, Treasures, Mysteries, and Stories. This exhibition space name is Ubuntu. What's the name? Ubuntu. Now we're all speaking Zulu. Ubuntu reflects our African heritage. We have artifacts representing um, uh, the Yoruba tribe, the Ashanti tribe, we have Ibeji dolls, all fun stuff. As you can see behind us, we have some masks from various regions in Africa. Taino is basically reflecting the Taino heritage that we have here, the Taino culture. So all things Taino you can find in the Taino exhibition. Treasures, Mysteries and Stories is our newest exhibition space. Treasures because our artifacts are, are our national treasures. Mysteries because some of our artifacts, we, we're not, we don't have a story behind them of how we acquire them or a background story. Um, and then some of them, we have a full story as to how we acquired them and the nature surrounding those particular artifacts, you know, where they're from, who used it before, you know, detailed information about it. So that is what Treasures, Mysteries and Stories is about. To learn more about Touch Tours and the interesting artifacts, just call the National Museum Jamaica. It is open to the public Mondays to Fridays from 8.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. See you soon! Water is precious. So we encourage everyone to practice the four R's of water conservation. Always remember to reduce your use of water wherever possible. Replace water wasting devices with water savings devices. Reuse water wherever possible. And wherever leaks are found, please repair them and repair them quickly. Don't delay. Practice the four hours of water conservation today. 
We started on the farm and there we shall return. But not to view the plants, but rather a simple piece of technology that's helping to elevate our farming standards to international levels. Take a look. Based on laws imposed by the United States, Jamaican farmers are required to be certified under the Food Safety Modernization Act, as well as the Global Good Agricultural Practices Global Gap, if they want to export to that country. Given this development, the Rural Agricultural Development Authority, RADA, saw the need to introduce a hand wash station for farmers. It's part of the measures to assist local growers improve sanitation on their farms and fulfill one criteria for export certification. The concept behind this is just a little bit different. Um, usually other hand wash stations will have a gravity fed system, but we, we, what we done, um, in, we have incorporated a system that was here, that was developed here locally several years now, where we used um, the pump and spray that was introduced some time ago. Although it was introduced for the same concept in terms of showing and things like that, we have used the features of the pump and spray to add a little bit more dynamics to our presentation here. We have a pressurized system. So that calls for a person's self. One person can actually wash their hands here without assistance from somebody else. So you'd go there without contaminating that water source that you have. This hand wash station is not only affordable, it is also easy to assemble. All you need is an iron trolley, three oil kegs, a pump and spray instrument, and some PVC pipes and fittings. From, from there, at a local welder, we, we modify the, the, the trolley and in a way that we could um, install the, the kegs. So, here we have the, the trolley and we, and we weld the handles so, so it would be able to hold the clay steadily. And this is a pump and spray that we can get locally. So how it works is that a farmer or anybody who is working in, in the field would come by the wash station, he would get some soap on, on his hand, okay, and he would pump it would pump the system. The system, the pair would pressurize the bottle and in return the air will displace the water and the water will comes up. And then the farmer would wash. After washing, the farmer wouldn't have to touch anything to contaminate his hands. He would just move over, over to the hand towel and dry his hands. It was good. I enjoyed doing it. <laughs> it wasn't hard at all. It was just easy. Just put my foot and pump it. it just, water just come up and I wash my hands. The effects of not having a hand wash station, um, well, it's, it's really more for, for safety as it relates to you, the, the, the farmer. Because what my rather's mandate is also about is to educate farmers on best practices as it relates to agriculture and the farmer's safety is a part of the best practices that we, we are trying to encourage out there. The team also successfully designed a water pump made using a weed hacker, which can fill a 50-gallon drum in five minutes. This water can be used for more than one purpose. So a farmer can have a water but need a water pump, cannot afford a water pump. Now what the farmer can do is just easily retrofit the water and a pump, merge them together so that you can have a water pump and a walker. So at times, whenever the farmer needs a walker, we just remove the pump and put on the walker section. Farming may be expensive, but through innovation, your basic equipment could be just what you need to ensure greater savings.
How much do you know about the work of the Administrator General's Department? Not much? Find out more in this upcoming feature. Anna, why are you knocking down my door? What is it? Jackie, I don't know what to do. From Jason dead, I have nothing to give to the children and I don't know where to turn. So why you didn't go down to the Administrator General's department, the place I told you about the other day? Lord Jackie, I know you try to help me, you know, but members say me and Jason never did marry, you know. What do you mean by that, Anna? The law say, if a single man and a single woman live together as husband and wife for five years and more, immediately before death, then he or she is considered a spouse. Really? That means we can't get something then? Because boy, it's rough, you know. Yes, man, just go down there. Tell them about the case that Jason died leaving no will, mm -hmm. house, and children under 18 years. Go down there and see what them can do for you. A true, you talking, a Jackie. Where is the place there again? Down a waterfront, man. 12 Ocean Boulevard. Go down there, talk to them, and see if them can help you. Okay, I'm going down there right now. Good morning, madam. How are you? Good morning, miss. I hear that the Administrator General's department can help me. You see? My children, them father died, leaving me with the two pitting them, and I'm me alone I care for them. Did he leave a will? My will, ma'am. After Jason never ready for dead, I come in, I come from work and drop down dead. My friend tell me, say, under the law, I'm considered a spouse. By the way, who is a spouse? Under the Interstates, Estates and Property Charges Act, a spouse is a single man and woman living together as husband and wife for five years or more. By living together, the two persons should not have been separated at any time during the five years, immediately before death. A surviving spouse includes a person who is legally married, that is, he or she went in front of a pastor and took the vow of marriage. If Anna meets the requirements, she can hire an attorney at law or go to the legal aid clinic to apply for an order from the court declaring that she's a spouse. Some of the questions the court will look at are, did Anna and Jason break up during the five years? Did Jason have any children, born in the same year as Anna's children? The court will also want to know if Anna or Jason were married before and not divorced. Once the order has been granted, the spouse would be entitled to benefit from the estate of the deceased. For further information, you can visit the Administrator General's Department in Kingston, third floor at the Office Center Building, 12 Ocean Boulevard, or call us at 922-183023. You can also visit our Western Office at the second floor of the National Housing Trust Building at 42B Union Street, Montego Bay, St. James. Telephone 630-4261. Our website is at www agd.gov.jm That's the Administrator General's Department securing your legacy. I surely enjoyed guiding you through the pages of the magazine today. But more importantly, did you like the show? Drop by our social media pages and share your thoughts about it. If there's anything you'd like to see again, you can. All you have to do is visit the JIS YouTube channel or our website. I'm Adrian Atkinson on behalf of the entire production team. Do take care. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.